Australian rules football. It's arguably Australia's biggest sport. It sees 100,000 dedicated fans pack out the Melbourne Cricket Ground every September to watch the Aussie game. It's seen the trials and tribulations of players throughout the generations, the highs and the lows of sports stars from all around the nation. It's a sport of great strengths and of great heroes. It's under that. Rosa! That's your mark of the season so far. Awesome. That's gutsy. It's courageous. But within these strengths and among those heroes, there lies a great weakness. They're all male. And that is about to change. The establishment of a National Women's League will provide a platform to inspire young girls to reach for the stars. Our game will never be the same. The most important thing, inspire those young girls looking up at the TV. Knowing that there is a national women's competition coming up is really exciting and it's what gets me through every training session. Back when I was in Auskick, you couldn't really see what the highest level was, but as time goes by, it's becoming more and more clear and can't wait for the national competition. With the inaugural Women's AFL League to kick off in 2017, what is it, exactly, that makes this great game so exciting? Peter Holden is a football broadcaster and self-declared fan of the women's game for independent online news source Girls Play Footy. He believes the action of the game speaks for itself. So that's what makes Aussie Rules great. It's a 360 degree game. You can be tackled from anywhere, you can kick the ball forward, you can kick the ball backwards. There's no offside rule. There's deliberate out of bounds. You're always being encouraged to keep the ball in play. It's always action, there's always go. It's not like American football, it's stop start. It's not like soccer where, again, you know, if you go forward and you run forward, there's an offside rule, there's annoying stoppages to the game. You're encouraged to keep the game flowing. There's tackling, there's no pads. It's a brilliant sport. And the reason why it's the biggest in Australia is because it is so exciting. And also, it's the stories that go along with the players and with the clubs as well. For the ABC's Tracy Holmes, these stories, which have been built around the males of the AFL, are changing, and women are the face of the next chapter for the Aussie Rules story in this country. People have fallen in love with the male heroes of the game because there hasn't been a women's game. Well, there has been a women's game, but it hasn't been recognised. And it's only now, in 2016, where the AFL has made a commitment to the women's game starting next year. And again, there's a lot of hurdles that they still haven't successfully jumped. They've kind of, you know, done a hundred metre dash in a hurdling event. <laughs> and, and the hurdles are kind of falling, you know. But they... You look at uh, fandom of AFL, you know, pretty much 50% of any crowd in an AFL game is female. So they're already making a lot of money out of the female fan base. You know, now it's time to kind of give back and invest and, and grow the female competition as well. With 16 marquee players already named among the eight clubs for next year's league, the face of that investment is looking positive, and for the stars you'll need to know, it's been a long time coming. Anna Swanson and Renee Forth are two of those marquee players. Born in Western Australia, they've made the jump to the Greater Western Sydney Giants, and the Women's League has been an opportunity that comes after years of effort. I grew up um, in Mandra, which is an hour south of Perth. Um, I live with mum and dad, and I've got a younger brother who's 18. Um, I played junior footy at under 12s level um, and then I went on to play basketball until I found out that there was a female AFL team. Yeah, so I'm from Geraldton which is four hours north of Perth. Grew up on the coast there and moved to Perth when I was 19 and I was originally playing soccer so I moved to further my soccer and then I did my first ACL then and I was like oh this surely can't be the only sport that I'll finish up my sporting life playing. So I went on to Gaelic and then a friend put me on to footy and got into that when I was about 24. So 2011 I started female footy. Like Emma and Renee, 
English-born WA player Sabrina frederick Traub and Queensland star Emma Zilke will front the Brisbane Lions squad in 2017 and have been preparing for years in their respective state leagues. For all four players, the importance of the National Women's League is a crucial step in the right direction for the AFL. The AFL is taking the direction of inclusion and I, that, you know, that, in, that involves having the 50% of the population involved in the game and I think it's definitely going to change the game because what women bring to it is a completely different spin to it. So even if you don't necessarily like the men's game, it might be you love the women's game because it's just a little bit different. So I think it's exciting because it can involve new fans, new revenue or whatever it is. It's going to be different directions coming from businesses to little kids that just want to watch girls play a sport. Yeah, I think um, for Australian sport, definitely, like I think it's massive for girls who are 10, 11 and 12 now to be, they're going to be able to watch us every week um, and it's going to give them something to strive towards. So like before I said, I never thought I'd play AFL. Um, girls now actually, they can um, and they can live like elite athletes and um, I think when I was young that's all I wanted to do. I didn't care what I was doing, I just wanted to go to the Olympics or um, something big like that. So um, and now we, now we have the opportunity to be elite athletes and show girls who are 10 or 11 and 12 younger than that that they can do it as well. Not only for the 10, 11 and 12 year olds, there's other girls that have gone to other chosen sports because AFL there wasn't a pathway yeah. so they might be playing basketball professionally but AFL was their sport of choice so now they can come back into that. Having the National League is a huge step forward for women in sport. I mean there's so much competition now with with everyone raising their um, salaries and that type of thing within cricket and netball and for the AFL to make that initiative and, and bring a, a women's league on board is, is amazing in itself. What my passion is is to hope that a little girl will pick up an AFL ball instead of uh, a netball or a cricket ball or any other sport I guess and make it the number one sport sporting choice in Queensland. With the launch of the Women's League originally tipped for 2020 and pay rates ranging between $5,000 and $25,000 a season, compared to the male league's $300,000 average, Tracy Holmes believes the AFL has a responsibility to serve its professional players. The, the major hurdle at the moment, and it's only because it's the one that's been given most prominence in the media, is the pathetic salary they've offered. Now, if you want to make something a success, anyone will tell you that requires investment. But if you want it to be successful, you need full-time professionals playing the game, the same as the men do. You're not going to be a full-time professional with time to train and develop your skills and develop team cohesion when you're offered something so paltry it's below the minimum award and you're going to have to work a full-time job as well. Obviously the big issue at the moment is pay. Now there's no perfect equation, we're never going to get it 100% right, but obviously they're trying to find what can be a livable wage. I think many people get messed up in the argument thinking that the women are arguing for equal pay. They're not arguing for that, they're just arguing for a rate of pay that is fair. Some see $5,000 for an eight week season and go, oh that's generous, but actually you've got to throw in a dozen or so weeks of pre-season training as well, plus community commitments that they've got to do on behalf of those clubs. It's actually quite a bit of a um, commitment to the game and you've got to weave that into many are doing studying many have got full-time jobs as well to balance it. For the marquee players at the centre of the divide next year's league is more about defining their own path rather than recreating the male game. I think I just think it's, it's pretty important for us to create our own brand um, so we're not trying to recreate like we're not trying to do the same as what the boys have done um, we don't want to match them. Our skill level is different, our bodies are different, the brand of footy we play is different, so it's just important to create our own um, sort of brand of footy um, and our own league. And I think that um, because it's never been done before, um, we've got a license to sort of do whatever we want and, and go our own way. So, um, and that's just going to engage more people into the game. You see comments, you see negative comments, and you, you, you kind of just want to prove them wrong. Um, so if they say something, um, inappropriate I guess it's like well I just can't wait to show them that we can play just as good as the men um, and we do have an exciting brand of footy. I mean there's times when people said oh what's she doing here why is she playing but then after the game they'll be like well wow, that's that's crazy and that's all you want really is just to have them change their opinion after they leave so that's what we can do is have a good brand of footy and have a good league and all those people that have criticism coming away with it being like oh those girls can actually play football. While there remains some conflict among fans of the game, 
the overwhelming majority of supporters believe the Women's League is a step forward for Aussie rules. I think it's a great thing, yeah, the women should get recognition just like the men, they have them. We could be here in a couple of years time watching the women's fight. It's the same like you see UFC, soccer, all the women are coming through in all sports now, so yeah, it's great, great for all sports. I think it'll be great. I've got a daughter that's nine, and I think it'll be great for her to have some role models. She's about to start playing it in school next term, so I think it will be great for her to see some more girls in the school and just generally encouraging healthy athletic activity. There'll always be a, a sort of hardcore group that will resist this until they can resist no longer, and that's probably going to take a couple of generations. But you can see, even in talking to children of today, who learn so differently to children of your era, gosh, think back, children of my era. The lessons are so different and there's a lot of messages now that there is no difference, you know, if whoever wants to play can play. It's going to be tricky. There are some that have always supported women's football that are 100% sold, brought into the concept. There's a few that are now starting to catch onto it and going, well, this is actually a pretty entertaining brand of football that are being won over. Sadly, they are going to be the dinosaurs. They are going to be those that are going to say, no, nah, women shouldn't be playing football, or this is rubbish, or this is junior standard. I don't want to know about it. Those people you're never going to win over. They're going to be the sad sacks. They are going to be like that till the day they die. You can't win over everybody, unfortunately, but you can try and start winning over people in the middle ground who don't know about women's footy yet. you just got to educate them about it. With only months until the Women's League officially kicks off, the focus has also been turned to the next wave of potential female stars. Kate Valance is an up-and-coming player with the UTS Shamrocks in Sydney. She grew up watching the AFL, and like the marquee players of next year's launch, she also has experienced the ups and downs of female footy throughout her career. I'm from country New South Wales, so we don't even have a league or team out there for girls. Um, and so when I moved to Sydney, I started playing this year. And it's just, it's been so much fun to get to know the girls, to finally play the sport. While professional female Aussie rules is yet to hit the heights of its male counterpart, Kate believes next year's launch is a step towards bettering female talent in the game. I think it's a really good thing. Even though it's not as big as the professional men's league, I reckon someday it will definitely get there. Um, for it to start, you know, three years earlier than predicted, it's amazing. Obviously has had so much support. Um, girls football, especially this year, has just blown up. It's had so much more support. I know a lot of people know about it more often. Um, and being in the Chamois, uh, they're, they're a great team. And we're, yeah, we're stepping up, definitely. The league's getting harder. Um, I think the more it develops, the better the sport will get. For girls in Kate's position, the players currently at the top of their game want them to know one thing work hard for it and believe that you can do it and take opportunities when they come because so GWS for us was an opportunity and you've got to take it and put yourself out there so I'd just probably say go with it. They don't have to worry about breaking through the barriers of that the, the fact that they can't play the sport now. No, they just need to focus on actually playing the sport and learning as much as they can about it because yeah. it's there, it's going to be there for them when they get older. If you love the sport, stick with it and just, you know, you're you can be as good as you want to be, and I think the only person that's going to stop you is yourself. So for those little girls, I would just say keep going at it, and if you enjoy it, then keep going. Yeah, I think it's it's really inspirational now. I mean, there's already like a bunch of household names for the women's sport, and hasn't even started yet. So I think um, for those young girls that are like at that stage where Sub said, do the, do we still play with the boys? Do we still go into the women's league? I think. This is the perfect timing now for them to see that, yeah, there's a pathway for me to go to the top. Um, and having the league in place is, is hugely motivating for them girls now that they can go somewhere with it. And it's not just a kick in the back um, park with, with the brother. So now um, it could be a, a, a duel between the brother and sister who gets drafted first, which, which I think is pretty cool. So, yeah. And so the scene is set and all eyes are looking forward perhaps to a September day somewhere in the future where 100,000 fans might pack the MCG for the final of a women's Aussie rules match and not just for the boys. Whether there be 100,000 at the MCG for a women's footy grand final, it may take a while. And let's be honest, with the men as well, the men were playing in front of grand finals of 15 to 20,000 back in the 1890s. So 100,000 people didn't happen overnight. 
and even with the women's league if it's a curtain raiser to an AFL men's grand final if you've got different teams competing in each grand final that may affect the crowd so it's going to take if they do get to 100 I'm not ruling it out but it's going to take a long time for it to build up from a very short season early on stars will emerge and and that will only keep growing um, I, I don't think there'll be any retreating from that and anyone that thinks anything different is is actually not giving credit to the fact that these women really know how to play the game and already they're very skillful